Today I review a budget paint gun that's going to give you amazing results with a small compressor. This is the Eastwood LT100. I reviewed this gun a few weeks ago. We took it for a spin and it performed beautifully. And the great thing about this gun is this gun has a low CFM, so it requires very little air to run properly. It was 4.25 CFMs on this particular gun, which conventional guns take at least 13 CFMs to run properly and consistently. So this is a very good option for a DIY repair or someone with a small compressor working out of their garage or at home. So after reviewing this gun on the channel, the Eastwood LT100, a few of you reached out to me in the comments, said, hey, that Eastwood is the same exact gun as the spray at 33,000. So I wanted to go ahead, purchase this gun and make sure that was the case because this is a less expensive option. This uh, spray at 33,000 is 50 to $60 where the Eastwood runs just under a hundred dollars. So it's almost, it's about half the price of the Eastwood LT100. And as you can see, the guns look relatively identical. So we're going to take this apart and look at the caps. The spray at 33,000 here has a low CFM as well. They call this gun an LVLP, low volume, low pressure paint gun operates at 3.5 to 3.9 cfms at 30 psi which is very similar to what they uh, call for with the eastwood lt100 here these caps look relatively identical the air passages are the same it does have a little bit different collar on it this one has a finer collar than this one along with the same gun. I mean, this has the Eastwood branding and this has the R500 branding. I'm sure it's gonna spray the exact same. And if it does, this is gonna be a good option for you guys to purchase, to do your own repairs at home in a small garage with a small compressor. This is a 1.3 tip, comes with the gun, comes with the cup, it's basically the same box as the LT100. It comes with a clean, couple cleaning brushes. So let's go ahead, we'll clean this gun out. We're gonna mask up this van and let's start spraying and see how this thing performs. Okay, there's wide open on the fan pattern. Fan pattern looks good. I'll also be testing out the Spectrum disposable cup system. I purchased this system at Harbor Freight. I haven't had the opportunity to use it yet because I did not have the adapter, but I have the adapter that fits from the Eastwood to the Spectrum, so we'll use that and I'll test that out today. The gun is clean and the van's ready to paint. So I'm going to use the Spectrum system. This has a measuring cup housing and the liners. This is just a starter pack, so it comes with like five lids and five liners. It does have a micron filter in the lid. Now this system uses a collar and screws on to tighten down the lid. The PPS system twists and locks into place, so it's just a little bit different. Uh, but this system does work pretty well. Now the paint we're going to be using today is the Nason XL. This paint mixes up two to one. That's two parts paint, one part reducer. So we'll add our paint and then we'll add our reducer. I am using slow reducer today because it's over 100 degrees, very hot in the shop. So we need a slow reducer. Before we start spraying, I like to wash everything down with isopropyl alcohol. This helps eliminate static. And I really do feel like it helps eliminating dust landing in your paint job or being attracted to your paint job. And this is 70% isopropyl alcohol, so it has a lower flash point. And I purchased just a bunch of this on Amazon. And if you're curious about any of the products or tools I use, I'll leave links in the description to everything I use. I also have a storefront that has everything organized and categorized, so it's easy for you guys to find. Here I'm using some compressed air and a tack cloth to blow it off and wipe it down at the same time. If there's any loose dust in any of these jams, we're gonna blow them out before we start spraying. Now it's time for our first coat of paint. 
I'll go over and put one coat on this. I'm not trying to put it on super heavy. I just want to put a good medium to wet coat on. Let that paint get introduced to the surface, and then we'll come back with a second and possibly a third coat. But if you check out this gun, you can see it has a nice large spray pattern. It's covering the surface, the big surface area. It's probably about a 10 inch spray pattern. I have the gun set at 30 PSI for the air pressure. I have the fan pattern wide open. The volume I have turned wide open as well. You can tell by how quiet this gun is that it's not consuming a ton of air. In fact, I'm sure you could use this gun with a 20 gallon compressor, maybe even something that's smaller than that. Here it is after the second coat of base coat. I went ahead and let this dry so we can tack it off before we start clearing. I noticed there's a few little particles of dust I want to take care of before we apply the clear coat. Now, I did learn something about using this gun in these hot temperatures, and we'll talk about that when I start clearing. I was extremely happy with how this gun laid down the base coat. Nice, flat, smooth finish, and that's what you want before you start clearing. Now, we're going to go ahead and tack rag this off. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're going to put one more coat of base on right here. And then I'll apply the clear coat and I'll talk about the techniques I like to use when spraying clear coat with this particular gun. This is the clear coat we're using today. It's the Finish One FC710. It's a spot panel clear coat that mixes up four to one, four parts clear coat, one part activator. We are using a slow activator today because it's so hot here in Oklahoma, over 100 degrees. They do make an overall clear coat as well. And if you're looking for a clear coat for your project, check out my playlist on clear coats. I'll leave a link in the description. And just like that, we're ready to clear coat. So I wanna spray it a little bit, make sure my pattern's good. Always make sure you have a good pattern before you start spraying. Now my settings have not changed from the base coat. I went ahead and I have my fan pattern wide open. I have the air pressure set at 30 PSI and the volume wide open as well. So I started off with my normal spraying technique. I'm six inches away, overlapping 70%. You want to have a consistent speed and a consistent distance from the panel. We're not trying to make it look perfect on our first coat. We just want to introduce that clear coat to the surface, get a good base on there, and then, then on the second coat, we're really going to slick it out and give, give it that high reflection and DOI. The spray it gun was laying down the clear coat beautifully. Now, I wasn't particularly happy with the finish I was getting. It wasn't quite as flat as I would like. I like it to flow out a little bit better, but that is not the fault of the gun. That is because it is over 100 degrees and probably over, probably around 120 degrees in this shop. As a result, I had to make some changes to my technique in order to get the best looking finish possible. Now, I'm gonna give you some bonus tips and footage. After I get done clearing this, we'll take a look at it. I'll show you what I'm talking about, and then I'll show you how I corrected it and sprayed in this heat with this particular gun.
Here's a look at the finished product, and it came out really nice, and the spray it gun performed really well. Now, it was very hot, and the clear coat was drying really quickly. This led to a little bit more texture than I like to see, so let me show you how I corrected that. It's the very next day, and it's, again, over 100 degrees. I had a couple pieces of trim I needed to paint and a rear bumper, so after the first coat of clear, it was not flowing out like I expected like I wanted it to. So you need to be able to make changes when you're spraying and when you're painting and overcome obstacles. And that all comes with experience. But what I did in this situation, being that it was over hundred degrees, I had to decrease my distance from the panel. So instead of spraying from like six, four to six inches away, I had to spray about three inches away from this panel with increased speed to get the flat looking finish that I wanted. Now, I just did a courtesy coat on this bumper, so there are some chips and nicks, but overall, the finish came out beautifully. It flowed out perfectly after I made those corrections. So there's always a solution. It's all about learning how to make those corrections. Listen, if you want to learn how to restore or repair your project, click on one of these videos now. I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise.